So what's up, how you doing today? In this video, we're gonna look at the cage system and break down what it is and how to use it. And at the end, we're gonna look at a way that's gonna speed up the process of learning this and applying it. And it's really a mindset and a technique we can use for pretty much anything that'll kind of make learning a little faster. So first, let's break down what is the cage system. You may have heard this term before. It may sound a little intimidating, a little confusing. It is so simple. All it is is an acronym for C-A-G-E-D of the open chords that we most likely and hopefully already know. So chords like C, A, G, E, and D. And we're gonna take those shapes and apply them further up on the fretboard so it really unlocks it. So we're gonna take these open chords and make them closed. And sometimes the technique and the fingering is a little challenging, but we're gonna, we're gonna work around that. So we're gonna actually go, instead of an order through C, A, G, we're gonna go from the most kind of common, easiest, and start with E first. So if we take the E shape, and we imagine we're playing like this and barring down, which we don't need to do that, so it would be a little unnecessary to play this, easier to do that. But if we slide that up, that becomes an F. And I can't tell you how many times I've had students come to me and say that they used to play a long time ago, but they got to a song with an F and it was just so hard they gave up. And I mean, it's, it's really unfortunate and probably more unfortunate that pe that happens so often is that sometimes these people had teachers they were studying with at the time and uh, really they should have kind of worked around with them and shown that you don't have to do a full F. You could just do these three strings or the middle four and you don't have to do the bar to uh, get through an F in a song. So. Um, but, but we're gonna look at the bars and, and at the end, look at some ways to get around that if it is a little challenging for you. But that would be an F chord in the E form. So thinking about the E that we probably again already know. And that means we can then play it anywhere. So if we play it up here, this would be a G in the E form. So this right here, is the root of that chord. So that would be a G. And if you don't know, the root, third, all these things I have in my chart, don't worry about it. It's something that, if it hopefully piques your interest, you'll want to learn about in the future. Just know that this is the root, this is the G, and that's that E shape. Again, we'd probably play it like this, but if you imagine that, there it is. So if you just know the notes in the fretboard, here's an A, there's an A in the E form. It really opens things up. So uh, a lot of this, we do need to start learning the notes. We don't have to know them everywhere, but at least just start with these two strings and we can expand onto these uh, as well. So moving on to the next one, if we play A, and we play it like this, if we move it up, here would be a B, or up here, that would be a C in the A form. And then the next one, D. And say we do it up here. So this one right here, this open D, if we play it here, second fret, that's an E, that would now be an E in the D form. And that's where it starts to get to be a little tricky. It's a little bit of a stretch. So a way around that is we could just forget this and just play this up here. So it's like playing a D like this, just these three, just that triangle of notes. And they can play it anywhere. And this is, this is really common that people. A lot of like Led Zeppelin songs use that. So that would be the D shape. So the, again, the only thing here is we're just thinking about shapes we already know and, and making it easier to learn new shapes and move it all around over the, the, the fretboard. So then the next one moving on would be G. I'm sorry, we'll do C, we'll do C next. So C, like this, this one is pretty tricky. I hated this one at first. If you imagine playing C like that, if we slide it up a couple frets, this would be a D. And it's like, ooh, that's killer, but I love it now. Once you get familiar with some things, you, you might grow to really like it. And you don't have to play the whole thing. We could just play the top four. And that's a little bit of a stretch, having that pinky there. Or get rid of the top one, and then we don't have to bar down at all. And we just do the middle four. Oops. Like that. Right? Not so bad. 
This is a good one for some little embellishments like that, kind of Hendrix style uh, stuff like that. And this, the next one especially for that. So that would be G. If we played A, so up two frets with this G shape, imagine we go like this. This is a real stretch. So G, we're going from being pretty much the most common chord on guitar, especially if it's acoustic uh, kind of bass music. G's the biggest chord there. But now it's kind of a challenging one for this closed shape. Like, oh, I never really play this. This is too much. So I'll just take the bottom one off. Now you can do this or take the top one off, do that, or take both the top and bottom off and just play the, the middle four. Much easier and now you can, you can do these little Hendrix things around there. So now you could go from A up to an A there. You know, say you do a C, a closed one here. This would be C in the A form, but not doing the whole thing and then C in the G form, but not doing the whole thing, just the middle four. The only thing that's changing is this note. So it's kind of a restful chord here, and then here, a little more colorful, because it's got that third in the bottom, the E. And it's a good one for the Hendrix stuff too, again. Just slide into that. And that's it, so we can take these and we can do the minor, Equivalent, so if we were playing B, e, we hit an E minor, so that would be F minor and stuff. But that's a little outside the scope of what I want to do right now. Just want to focus in on just those majors, but just point out that we can do minors, we can do seventh chords, we can do all kinds of chords. But the majors are really the way to start and to be using that as a foundation for building other chords off that. So with that said, you've got five different shapes that you can move all over the fretboard. So a good thing to do is just start going over and start just going around where you would know the notes or start figuring out like say a D right here if you didn't know that and trying D, you know, in the C shape, try it in the A shape and try whatever you can and then maybe take a chord progression, say G, C, D, right? And maybe we've got, okay, G, C, D. Now try it the closest place you can right here. So G in the E form. C in the A form, and we could do the full one, we could even just do the small one, and then D, you could do the same thing, just move it up two frets, or you could do D in the C form. So really get used to mixing and matching, it's really like a choose your own adventure thing, and it takes a while, if you're not used to this, to get used to thinking about things, seeing it, hearing it differently, knowing the notes on the fretboard and the technique and all that stuff, but it will come in time. So just challenge yourself. It, it, it keeps it always interesting and fun. So I like to take any chord progression. To me, I never get bored of the chord progression because I'm constantly trying out different ways of playing it and using this kind of stuff and other stuff as well. So it, it always kind of keeps it fun and interesting and it always presents a challenge to try things new, new ways. So the one big challenging thing is sometimes just the technique, like I was saying, like this one's very challenging. So how can we tackle this faster and not just keep struggling and get frustrated and give up? But say we're doing this G to a D right here. And even if we're gonna do more chords, we can just focus in on just these two. So don't just go through them all over and over. Just focus in on just these two. And look at what each finger is doing. So say the first finger for the G, it's barring across right here. And then the D, if you're doing the full one C form, it's going across these four strings, which we don't want to go across the whole thing. We want to go just across those four and on the second fret. So we can take just that one finger without playing out, we can put our pick down if we've got one and just do that, what it's on G and then what it's going to be on D right here. And just go back and forth. And this is a nice thing, you can do this if you're around other people and they might be annoying if you're playing because they're not even going to hear you. You're just just getting that motion down. Try to do it without even looking to, you know? And then when you feel comfortable, look at, say, the next finger. Third finger right here on the G. Where does it go on the D? Goes here. So it goes from the fifth fret, fifth string, a D, to the fourth fret, fourth string, an F sharp. And then same thing, just go back and forth, that one finger. And then when you feel ready, you could try putting them together, like that. 
and just go back and forth. And you start to see patterns, okay? If you do it at the beginning, it may seem like they're two totally different shapes, but now I can, I, I can see that they're moving back a fret, and this one's moving over one string. So they're both moving back a fret and up in pitch a string, and this one, instead of it being all six, is moving over there. Otherwise, it's almost the exact motion. And then you can just do that for each finger and just slowly put it all together. And it may seem like it takes a long time, but it really will speed the process up in the long run and will really make you get that G to D back and forth really quick. And eventually, when you feel comfortable, you gotta start adding some strumming and then eventually add you know, a real strung pattern, uh, picking pattern and, and try to keep a beat going, even if it's just strumming once. You know, keep a beat going. So you want that change to be instant. It can take a while. But you just have to be patient and just keep trying it out, you know, chord by chord, finger by finger, and you'll definitely get it. So let me know in the comments down below if any kind of light bulb went off, if you've kind of heard about the cage or it's brand new to you, hopefully this kind of opens things up, but maybe you already knew all about it. If there's anything that uh, you love about the cage system, just let me know down below. Let's get a conversation going and uh, have fun with this and I'll see you in the next video.